guide 2019. Now this is a training about how to effectively find and nail down your niche. Now it's a bit of a process and hands up, when I first started my online business, um, I struggled, I really did, because I didn't know who to actually target, and I was really confused with myself, I was confused how to actually get that information as to who is the best person for me to serve, and it actually got me very, very frustrated, and if that's you, you right now, then I completely understand, because yeah, totally get it, totally being there. So, um, basically the problem is, and the issues are, is that really, ultimately, people don't actually do the research because they don't realise how to do the research, how to approach finding your actual niche. And what it boils down to is that uh, they end up marketing to nearly everyone and they're trying to please everyone. And at the end of the day, you are not going to be serving anyone, serving everyone. So it's all about really, really honing in on that one particular group of people um, so then you can speak their language, so you can deliver your message, so you can relate and connect. And then therefore that becomes very powerful and a lot easier to um, actually deliver your service and program. So if you are too generic, and you're quite scared of being this individual that you are, then I'm sorry to say, but you're going to have to change that because that actually won't get you very far at all. So it is a bit of a process. And really, the process is in one to four sort of main stages. And the first one is really, who are you? Now, the reason why I ask that is because no one can copy you because you are you, you are unique, you are awesome, you just have your own set of qualities. And I know um, I do say in other videos to model people, but that's obviously you know, more of a strategy in terms of like what they do on their landing pages and how they deliver certain things. But in terms of actually that person, no way. You, you cannot actually model someone else because that wouldn't be authentic to you and people who are looking at you online would actually see through that in, in authenticity. So it's just not really uh, appropriate that you, you do that. And if you were to actually always be yourself, you can never go wrong because that is yourself. So um, that is really the first point. You need to be able to stand out and by doing that, it's just all about you being yourself at any one time because then you will not hide behind this persona. You're not trying to be someone else that you're not. And if you were to try and copy or model someone else because you see that it's working for them, uh, it won't work. And then secondly, um, it's all about matching who you are to people that might actually um, resonate with you. So you need to really get around, um, you know, in your head, the idea that basically not everyone is going to like you. And uh, hock, shorer, uh, shock, sorry, shock horror story. But uh, at the end of the day, you're going to find out once you grow online, you are going to get comments. You are going to get, not necessarily haters, it's quite a strong word. You might do, it's obviously online. There's no sort of barrier to entry when it comes to people making nasty comments here and there. But at the end of the day, you are you. And it's like going to school or in a workplace. You're going to get on with, you know, maybe everyone or nearly everyone but not every everyone you know so it's just at the end of the day be expected um, of people not wanting to uh, to work with you because they may not like you <laughs> I waffled a little bit there but you know you get my point so uh, and then also uh, another point I just want to make sure I cover everything is to research a competition so it's all about again making sure that you have a service or a product, uh, sorry, service or a program that people are needing, people are wanting. And I have done a video uh, that actually goes into detail as to see uh, whether what you want to do is a match for the market that you want to get into. So there's that point there. And also, you need to then find out if they've actually got the money in place and if they're willing to actually pay for the service and program uh, that you actually want to you know deliver to the marketplace and then what you do after that once you've um, you know worked out who you are and uh, you know you've worked out who your competition are and if it's working and if the market actually wants your products uh, sorry your um, service or program 
and uh, it's all about testing. So that's really the process of niching down. So if I was to maybe break it down for you, so basically you are looking into choosing your niche. So if I was to say to you as an example, um, your market. So a market is huge and you could be from any background. And it's all about, I think, going into a market that you feel you can effectively help. So if you've got experience of something that you've overcome, and that's why I like helping coaches, because many coaches actually have a story to tell, and it's usually, um, I work with a lot, of, a lot of coaches that have actually overcome something, and they're like a one or two steps ahead of the people that they actually want to coach. So it could be like a weight loss story, or it could be a stress um, you know, management type coach who's actually got themselves out of a stressful situation or trauma. Now they want to, you know, pass over and pay forward what they've learned through their experiences. And really, um, a point to hear is that people don't actually buy coaching, they buy into the coach. So again, if you are authentic at any one time, then that is the most powerful thing that you can do in your business, is always be yourself, always be true in your nature and authentic to who you are. So the market, let's just give an example here. So if you pick a market, health and fitness, my uh, background really for the last sort of eight to nine years has been in the health and fitness background because I've had four indoor cycling studios, so two in China, uh, in Shanghai in particular, and also two here in Leeds in the UK. So, uh, you know, the example I could be here for me would be health and fitness, even though I've, you know, moved on from that now, and now I help, you know, business um, uh, coaches help get their, uh, um, their, their, you know, online business for a freedom lifestyle. Uh, but let's just say, uh, for argument's sake, health and fitness industry. Now, you need to then look into the sub-markets. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You need to select a sub-market that really, really excites you, that interests you, that you might even have experience working within, because again, that's gonna help you get to where you want to get to with your freedom lifestyle business quicker, because you're gonna be able to have that first-hand experience and knowledge already, instead of going off and learning it all, uh, to pass on to others. So let's just say a sub-market you want to work into is weight loss. So it could be that you are a weight loss coach and you've got a story and you've lost loads of weight and you've done it through X uh, method and now you want to pass on what you know, and what you've learned along your journey and also it's going to be great because obviously you were experiencing a lot of pain and um, you know, uh, you know, a negative impact that you must have experienced if you were at that sort of point and uh, for you to lose so much weight, again, as an example. Um, so here we are, and then what you do, and uh, this is how you actually niche down, oh, that looks like an M, niche, <laughs> niche down, is to actually pick a particular person. So let's just say, for argument's sake, for this um, uh, example, CEOs, so busy corporates, CEOs are of, bit of big firms. So you're gonna pretty much guess that they're gonna have the money uh, to pay for their uh, their online program with you because um, you know they are obviously a very high um, you know position in their company. They are um, a high hard working professional. Uh, a weight loss would be a very big pain point to a CEO because they're probably seen. Well, no doubt they obviously are a leader, but they they want to be seen as um, you know this 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 great figure. And if they are struggling with their weight yet they've got success and ever in all the other areas, it's not looking too congruent. And you know they need obviously that help in hand to get them to the next level with their weight loss. So. So the pain and the urgency is there as well, especially if they're up presenting uh, to groups of people and you know they might feel that pain and embarrassment, people staring at them. So the pain is there and obviously health and fitness is a very, very huge industry. So you are obviously going to always have people wanting to lose weight and in particular to niche down uh, CEOs. So actually at, have in mind a certain person that you want to go target. So that's how you niche down. So really, it's all about choosing your niche, which we've done here. So you might have an idea right now as to how you want to find your niche. Uh, feel free to make a comment or note your side. And then also, it's researching your audience. So once you've got to this part, it's then figuring out, well, where do your CEOs hang out? 
What do they do when they go online? Where do they shop? Where do they go on holiday? Who do you reckon their friends are? What do they actually do in their spare time? How do they spend their money? What are their interests? What are their hobbies? And you know, you need to literally be them. I mean, not literally in that sort of sense, but like you have to really be involved to the point where you feel like you are um, a, an, a CEO who is struggling with their weight and who has a high pressured job and who has everything else going for them. However, their weight is just really pulling them down. You need to live and breathe like them because then once you understand them on that really, really deep level, because it's not just knowing them on a surface level, it's really, really knowing and understanding them to their core, to their depth of their real sort of like pain points and what they're really really struggling with so um yeah to live and breathe your ceo experience is what you need to do because when you've got the message to put out to them they're going to really really resonate with you you can be like god that person really knows me it's like they're talking to me and they're reading one of your posts or your blogs or you're watching one of your videos so this is how niche you really need to get to you have to really really peel off all the layers and get down to their core of what their pain points actually are in this sort of situation so that's researching your audience and then from there you would build your avatar now it's not obviously the blue avatar in the James Cameron film however it's all about actually having a profile an actual um, image in your head give this CEO a name give them an age you know, how many kids do they have, if any? What, what car do they drive? How long have they been working at their bit in their company for? Like, what? Who are they? And actually, what I would do, because I've done this before as a uh, mentor in the past, along uh, my journey with um, nailing down my niche, actually go online and find a picture of your avatar and stick it on your wall so you know every time you are producing any content you are actually writing to them and it gives you such razor focus into who you're talking to because then you'll know their language and again to go a step further you need to actually meet with CEOs and really ask about their pain points and if you haven't got any clients yet go and find them. You have to really, really, in order to get the results as quick as you can, the quickest way possible, is for you to live and breathe their life. So once you really get to know them, you just take what their, what their language uh, that they're using is and put it into your marketing. So it's like you can literally record what they're saying if they, if they give you um, their permission to record, if you have like a quick coffee date or something, and you can just use their terminology and then put it in your marketing so when it's actually posted online for everyone to see with your targeted uh, marketing, uh, th then they can resonate with you. They'll be like, yeah, wow, that person really gets it. So that's how deep we need to need you to get when it comes to your uh, your niche marketing. So that is the process, and um, yeah, it's also I've touched up on a few tips along this um, along this training, but you have to be yourself at any one time. True authenticity really does shine through. And at the end of the day, we are all human. We all make mistakes. We all stumble across our words, that sort of thing. And, you know, it's not about being perfect because perfectionism doesn't actually exist. It's a concept. So at the end of the day, people actually relate more if you are being really genuine. And if you do make mistakes, just put your hands up, you know, hands up to making those uh, silly errors and, you know, hands up to that responsibility because at the end of the day uh, that's what people buy into people buy into that person not so much the coaching so i hope you found that of value let me know what you think and uh, yeah here's to the next video see you soon many thanks for watching this video and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe and bell notification button for more videos like this in your inbox you can start build and grow your online coaching business every first of the month Register for the next seven day results based challenge by following the link in the description box below or if you cannot wait until the first of the month then book a transformation call with me and I'll be more than happy to get you the results you want in your online coaching business. See you in the next video.